everyone. Hi, hi. Sorry, I'm a few minutes late. Mm, sorry. All right. I think I'm all set up, though. Okay. Get over here to chat. All right. How is everyone? Hey, Animal Lover. Hey, Tammy Sue. Hey, Rarely, rarely Care. Hey, Tax Max Bax Thunderclap. <laughs> Hi, DC. What up? What up? What up? How is everyone tonight? Mm. Y'all ready for that eclipse tomorrow? I have to work. Yeah, I, I didn't even bother requesting it off because I, I haven't worked on Monday in like probably like months pretty much. So I just assumed I'd have it off. But so we did. We weren't uh, we were really, really going to go anywhere far because our area, it, the state police said that the data shows to expect about a million people um, in our county and like just around our county for the eclipse. So we weren't really going to go far. Now, with me working, we're just probably going to go about as far as my work. So, this doesn't look very strange. No. Cat, go lay down. No, go lay down. Go lay down, cat. No. Go, 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 go. Go away. Go away. <laughs> All right. So, ready for the man's view? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, first things first. So, I, um, I finally heard back from someone in my DM today. Now, I'm going to play this clip and to remind everyone what it was Katie said back in February, okay? Hey, Meg. Hi, Meg. Excuse me. Hi, Lily. Okay. Because of the solar clip showing up between the Saturday and tomorrow. A PD play or PD day. I don't know what that means. I know, like, where I'm at, like, this, I think most, if not all of the schools are canceled or closed for the day, but. So, all right, so back in February, when she made her videos where she discussed the whole, um, the, the loss or the TROs and everything with Charla and everything, um, she, she made a few other claims. So I'm going to play this, this clip here just to remind everyone what it is I'm talking about. So this is from February 12th, 2024. Yesterday, I saw a video of his on a digital content creator who does and works for Chris Hansen of Take a Seat that I left a comment where I was so upset because I was like, how dare you have this man in here say these things about me? And then I realized it wasn't about me that Steve was trying to bring in me into a situation that was atrocious and link it to me, which again, had nothing to do with me exactly what he's doing to Sharla. And that creator said to me, he's a pathological liar. And I don't believe a word he's said. And that's now <clears throat> she, I believe she said more than this though, because I, um, I reached out to this, this, um, content producer or whatever for Chris Hansen. Um, his name is Wes, Westmost or something. And, and we had spoken like a, a waves back, like back when um, Steve had actually spoken with him and everything. And um, so I just went ahead and I messaged him. And here's, I'm not going to share the message because there's some personal issues regarding him or whatever. So, but I'm going to read them to you. I have permission to do that. So and first I'm going to read to you what it is I sent him. So, and I sent this on... February 13th, 2024. I said, hey there, it's been a while since we last spoke. I hope all is well. I was wondering if I could ask you to verify something for me. In a recent Instagram post, see, I said post, so I'm not even, she must have posted about it on Instagram too. By Katie Joy from Without a Crystal Ball, she states, quote, overnight, I got an email from a digital producer for Chris Hansen, who used to host To Catch a Predator on NBC. Steve tried to get Chris to do a show about how I've abused him. The content producer let me know they found him to be a pathological liar and they don't believe a word he said about me. That's what she claimed. So I went on to say, ask, um, 
Can you tell me, did you contact Katie Joy in an email or other means around the time it involved this chick, Jesse, on the show, too? So I said, around the time Jesse appeared on Take a Seat or at any other time to inform her that you believed Steve to be a pathological liar? If so, then why not continue on with the efforts to possibly have Steve on Chris's show? Thank you very much for your time and consideration, Aaron. Now, like I said, I sent that on February 13th. Well, he got back to me. Um, is that day going on? Saturday. And he said, hi, Aaron. No, that is not how that happened. Surprise. Katie Joy found my interview with Steve on my YouTube channel and attacked me in the content or comments before watching it. Because she assumed the video was about her and that I was somehow bashing her. She followed that up with an email accusing me of the same. I have never contacted Katie before or after, as she had nothing to do with the Jesse video. So, yeah. So she had she had stated or she had claimed on Instagram that she found this this person's um, YouTube channel and that they had spoken and that this YouTube content creator told her that he found Steve to be a pathological liar. Funny, because that's not the story he tells all. So it's not a huge lie. I get it, whatever. I mean, I don't think anyone really, truly believed her anyways. I mean, if you knew her, you, you knew not to believe her. But um, it's always, I don't know, it's always something that I feel like should be shared when there's actual proof or verification, someone to to corroborate the the truth of the matter, you know? So, um, yeah, I wanted to share that with you guys. Oh, so I also wanted to say, Um, so thank you very much for your reply. I greatly appreciate it. Yada, yada. Let's be answered that. Thank you again. I said, oh, hey, I'm sorry. One more question, if you don't mind. You mentioned above that Katie came to you in the comments to your video. Is that video still up? If so, is it on your channel? I don't see anything depicting Steve on your channel, so I have to ask. And it turns out it was on his second channel. That's why I couldn't find it. But um, So, yeah. But oh, Katie has since deleted her comments from the comment section, so we can't see her comments anymore. And um, apparently, like it was on a thread or more or more than one thread where she started it. So I think when she deletes the comments, like they all go, you know, because she was like the the I don't know B is what I'm looking for, like the sub thread or something leader, I guess. So yeah, she said that. Um, what was it she said? She originally said that, um, how is that, oh, she originally said that the dude admitted to her that they found Steve to be a pathological liar and um, some other shit. But yeah, the dude's like, no, that's not how that happened. Not at all. So I thought that that was interesting. Let me check chat and then we're going to move on. Yeah, see, and that's the thing, too. Like, when she did those videos back in February there, <laughs> I mean, she did them on her YouTube channel. So I think most of them were on the YouTube channel. Maybe a couple were on Instagram. But she did these, though, for, like, a big audience, okay? And she made a lot of fucking claims. And she's made a lot of claims, like, as if they were, you know, statements of fact. But she had nothing to back it up. And, and then when it turned out to be provable that she was wrong, she never corrected it. She never corrects it. So. For that reason, I think it's important. So, um, moving on. Um, so, I was thinking today, as I was reading um, the latest batch of really fucked up things Katie Joy could say or do while reporting on this um, grieving family, and I thought, you know, she's she's making all these defenses and everything for the her FOIA re report or request or whatever. Well. I mean, I could sit here and show like the police report from regarding her, but I'm going to, I want to do one better than that because really that's just like, for the most part, it's just like the law enforcement officials taking notes kind of, you know? Um, but I think as we go about doing this next step, I can add little bits of information to it as we go. But instead, I'm going to show something that has not been on YouTube for a fucking long while. I'm going to say since 2020. Um, so back in 2020, when Katie did her Me Too movement or moment or whatever, 
she did several live streams, several videos, and probably anywhere between 50 and 100 posts slash tweets, you know, comments, whatever. And then all of a sudden, she just up and took them all down. It was like nothing ever happened. So I'm going to go ahead and play one of those videos now, or one of the live streams now, I should say. So there, I should give a little bit of a trigger warning throughout this because this isn't the one where she tells her story. It's not that one. Though she does revisit certain sections of her story throughout the stream, but not in great detail or anything. Um, mostly what she revisits and what she describes in this stream is um, her interactions with the police department and some other things, but nothing, nothing, re, re, nothing much at all regarding that night in question. But there will be a few things here, and I want to give a trigger warning for that reason. If even hearing anything in the slightest is going to bother you, you might want to sit this one out. Um, so, yeah. Um, I will be paying attention, though, because I want to try and not have the name of the um, police department be stated, because she says this, the name of the police department in the street. And I don't want them to be targeted or harassed or anything like that, even though they really shouldn't be regardless. but. It's the internet, you know? Um, so yeah, that's where we're gonna be right now. So let me look at Che here real quick. Hi, Reno. But yeah, I mean, this is a stream that she put out there. She did this. I didn't put this out there. I didn't go and FOIA request this stream or anything. She put this out there. And it was up on his, her channel for like maybe a week or something. And I think it was only taken down, really, because I believe she may have begun served with a cease and desist back then. It was, this was like September 2020. But um, before she could take him down, I went and I saved everything. And, you know, most, as we all know, it's water in the bridge. And I think for the most part, I sent it to the police department because of all the bad mouthing she was doing, which you're going to hear in this stream. But, yeah, as I, as I was paying attention, though, to all this shit she was talking about, the grounds and just all the speculation she's doing and all the extra added heartache she's causing. I'm not saying I want to be like, how do you like it? That's not what I want to do. But I just don't feel like there's any really need to not stream these things if we wanted to or or so oh, I'm good here. What am I doing? Okay, I go there. All right. So this was uploaded. Um, wait, let me do that. It was uploaded, was it two years ago? Oh, September 6, 2020. Now, she did this dream right around then. Oh, no, wait. Oh, okay, no, I'm sorry. I uploaded it October 11, 2021, but the stream is from September 6, 2020. Okay. What do you want? Okay, so it's it's like an hour long. I'm, I don't know if we're going to get through it all tonight or whatever. I'm a little sleepy, but I'm going to try. So this is, her. thank you for helping me use my voice. Now, she had already told her story at this point. This is just her answering questions and laughing and, I guess, kind of in a weird way, cheerfully celebrating with her life. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's a little weird. Hello. You can see me. I know the first few seconds of a live are always a mess because you can see me. Hi. Okay. So, um. Um, yeah, all day today, I just want to tell you, I was having a lot of anxiety and I was feeling like all kinds of things. I was having the feels and I was like, I have to do this because I haven't done this on my platform and I have to get this out. See, that's weird. And I got it out and I wasn't expecting. Yeah. So this always got me, caught me off guard right there. It's like, so I'm sitting here and I, and I, I, I have to get this out, you know, cause I haven't put this on my platform yet. Like, why did you have to get it out? Like, maybe you, you felt like you had to, you, it was like part of your healing process or whatever. I'm not judging you if you in fact had to get it out. I just, I'm wondering why you, it is that you had to get it out. That's all. 
it to feel that good. You know, like, um, it's weird because after I did that, <laughs> I actually tweeted the, uh, St. Louis park PD, um, and I named him on Twitter and on Instagram and I tagged his family's businesses because okay, sorry, he that used his family's businesses to get out of it. So I, um, you know, Oh, you guys, I'm sorry. You get mad at me when I play with my hair. I am just really grateful because I feel like I wouldn't have been able to do this without this platform. And I feel like I'm so glad that I have this platform to be able to do this because not everyone does like not everyone can, um, have that sort of catharsis in a way, like putting it out there and like no longer allowing it to be attached to you anymore is one of the most empowering feelings that you can do. And, um, I feel like if anything, maybe it will change something. I don't know if it'll change anything for me, but I'm not going to hide anymore. And I'm not going to hide that his family's. A See, that, that always kind of amazed me too. When she said, I'm not going to hide anymore. She hadn't been hiding. Um, for years, she had been telling her story on her blog, um, on her, on Patheos in the comments section and like anywhere. Um, she, she wrote several blogs on, on this event in her life, actually. Um, so I just, it's, I don't know, this seems kind of ingen disingenuous, maybe. Fluence was part of the reason why he got out of it. Somebody in the comments actually said to me, why does it matter? <laughs> it's not fair that you name his family's businesses. And I think that's the problem here is it's why he got out of it. So you have to name the businesses because if you have someone whose family owns a bunch of different companies mm -hmm. and they are saying for those who are not clued in on this, this is a live stream she did in 2020 in uh, like the first week of September, 2020. This was her like me too moment where she told her story only she doesn't tell her story in this stream. She had already told her story. This is like the, the after hours stream, I guess you could say. So, but um, yeah. And now I'm not saying that people shouldn't be proud of themselves for when they reach certain milestones through through their therapy while dealing with things like this. Like absolutely. Um, but she just she seems really happy. Which I mean, if she's just like relieved, kind of happy, then great. All the more power to her, but happy. Saying, well, don't you know who my family is? I mean, right? My family, we're good people. We would never do that. It's my family. So if you know someone. See, okay. So when she says that, she's like speaking as though she's the her, the person she um she accused of doing this to her. So she say when she says we, she's talking as though he's speaking and talking about his family. It just seems kind of weird though. Like we mean my family, we wouldn't be involved in this. Are you kidding? We're we're my family. No. I don't know. It just seems weird. When in your family is doing that and then they're hiding behind your businesses in order to um, like do things, your family should know. And the public should know because the public is using your family's businesses and you're using your family to do things. So regardless of who owns what, his grandfather is the person who owned Jack's Cafe. And I think one of his aunts or uncles is who owns um the royal oaks restaurant and i don't know who owns the funeral homes i think it might actually be his grandfather that started it but so, either way yeah so um she said by name the person that she was accusing of having done this she she outed the police department we heard the name of the police department which i mean i think everyone knew the department name by now but she doesn't this stream she doesn't give any last names for anyone which is good um so when she gets starts talking about the investigating officer you're just going to hear his first name and it's like the most popular male name in the country and it has been for like decades so pretty sure that if someone wanted to try to find him in his pre precinct there's going to be more than one person there with his name i think so the one thing i will say is that um
it's been 13 years of me feeling like I've been up. It's been like David against Goliath, you know, like I was the 27 year old girl who came from a family. The, the 27 year old girl. Wow. Family that was not well off compared to them. I mean, my mom worked in education and my dad worked for public health. Um, my dad was a, he was a consultant when I graduated from high school. My dad was, you know, he worked in, he did public health, he did private health care, but he was an administrator, but we never were like well off. We were just average. And when you're going up against a family that is extremely wealthy and you're just some average person, you know, it's like, <laughs> you feel like you're up against a giant. And, you know, I feel like it's time to, you know, I feel like part of my drive to get where I'm at today is because I felt that powerless. Like I was like, nobody believes me. <laughs> I'm a peon. I have no platform. I have no one to say anything about. Okay, so she made this report in 2007. And it's, I, I can't imagine that in 2007, she sat there and said to herself, I have no platform. I mean, we're, was, were we expecting platforms in 2007? Like by name, especially, I, I don't, I mean, I can't really recall, but I don't think we were. About anything. And now finally I have a platform and I have people that will listen and I have no idea. He's going to be really, people are going to know who he is now. I'm done. So, um, thank you guys for, um, yeah, I'm not sure how much was raised for that video earlier. It was restricted by YouTube. Um, so I would like to minimize the discussion in the chat. Um, and I'm going to be very careful with this specific video because that video isn't going to raise any AdSense, unfortunately. Um, YouTube restricted it. And I figured it would. Um, okay, I want to just make sure that we all heard that correctly and clarify it. So here she is. She's talking about her, her Me Too story or whatever. She, I think at this point, this might have been her second stream or something. Maybe she had a video out. And she's going to refrain from using, like, the actual, like, professional wording for things because she doesn't want to lose out on AdSense. They just, I don't like, I don't know. They just feels wrong to me. But the portion of the money that was super chatted will be sent to rain. Um, and yeah, I'm overall just like, that's the part of YouTube that really bothers me is like, you can't talk about anything that matters on this platform. And try to raise money. I could do a donation, I think, um, where you could donate. But the sad part is if I do that, I don't have any, there's going to be no AdSense revenue that I can donate then. And it's just ridiculous because I wanted to do it so I could do it as a donation for AdSense. Because if you set it up as a fundraiser, all of your AdSense goes directly to the nonprofit. But if it's restricted, there's no revenue that comes in via AdSense because they don't place ads. They only do like limited ads that don't pay very much. And if you want to know, um, if you want to know about like how AdSense can destroy your income, go talk to Deaf Noodles because he had a bunch of his videos like all restricted. It basically turns your income on a video to zero. So um, I shared a link for Rain on my Instagram, and I also shared a link on my Twitter. So I am. YouTube is a pain for ads for sure. I will put a donation link on Facebook as well. Um, I was, <laughs> YouTube is being annoying for sure. Um, I was, my thing that I want to do more than anything is I was actually super surprised that lots of people did not know about rain. And, um, so you guys just talk about that on your social media. Like if you have people that, you know, that like, um, are going through something, let them know that that exists because, um, a lot of people clearly don't know it's, they don't know that it's there for them. Um, they don't know that it's like a possibility. They don't know that there's all these resources on that website that could help people. They don't know that there's a 24 hour a day, seven day a week hotline. Yeah, no they don't know that that hotline connects people. 
to their state resources. Um, that hotline that does intervention when you are in crisis. And for a lot of people who feel like they can't. Talk and, and I want to stop there for a second. So what she's, everything she's saying about rain is absolutely true. And I fully support um, her recommendation and everything there. So if anyone is in need, then by all, please listen to her on that part. Um, but I, this always stuck out kind of to uh, add to myself and, and many others, because this is the first and only time she's ever spoken about rain. She has told this story before in comments, in her blog posts, um, and she's spoken about it in, in video or live stream before this. She's not like, she didn't showcase it rather back then. But um, in every single version of hers, never once did she mention rain. I don't know. That just seems odd to me. Talk to anyone. That's like the best thing that you can have. Like when you feel like you have no one to talk to and you can't, like nobody's going to get it. These people on this phone line will save your life and make you remember what's important and remind you what you need to do and help you by doing so empathetically. And then um, I was great. Rain is, it's R-A-I-N-N dot org. Um, it's the national hotline for SA. And they do a lot of stuff for legislation. Um, they recently did a humongous push for kits to, so that there would be more funding for kits to be processed, which is awesome. Um, every state in the country is massively behind in their kits being processed. That's not true. Not every state. Um, not even when she made this video in 2020, not every state in New York hadn't been. Not in a long time. Um, and it's, you know... NAMI is great too. Um, RAIN is specific for this issue. So there's lots of different resources. There's like NAMI for help with mental health. Um, RAIN is specific for this. And that's why I suggest that because it's a different beast that they handle there. And, um, but there's lots of resources. There's local resources too. It's more just making sure that you guys know that there are resources there for you and you don't have to be alone. Um, I'm so glad that like my friend told me about rain when I was going through all of that, because that's how I found my county resources. And it's like, if you don't know what you don't know before you get into the middle of it. Right. So, yeah, I'm, um, okay. Okay. Kitty. Oh, yeah. What are you doing? So, um, either way, um, there was like something else, like there was a lot, there were some comments that we, people were making like, oh, you're just doing this because you said something about someone and because of that, you're doing this and you're making this up. Someone even accused me. Okay. So what she's referring to there is that um, like just a couple of days before she, she did all of these streams and videos to, talking about her, um, her experience there in 2007, she had just spoken about so um, Sophie Long for the first time. And in a stream, that's when she called her a brat. She called a um, an alleged as a childhood SA victim a brat. Accused said that she just seemed to be acting bratty rather than out crying these crimes that she claims had been had been happening to her. So, yeah, she called she called a potential victim a brat. So this that's what she's talking about. When she says that, oh, you're just doing this because you did X, Y, and Z or whatever. That's the X, Y, and Z. Of stealing my story off of Netflix, which is actually kind of amazing. I don't know how I would steal the story that I've been saying for 13 years. <laughs> like maybe Netflix stole my story. I don't know. But um, I don't do anything because of like, I'm not calculated like that. No, Honestly, no. I was mm -hmm. truly affected after I did my stream about um, Circle of Hope Ranch. And then it was like back to back. It was diving into what Josh Duggar did combined with the Circle of Hope Ranch, Girls Ranch in Missouri story. And both of those combined, it just like, it hit me like a wave. And it was like, I, I haven't been hit like that in years. So, you know, if you're hit like that in a wave and you are brought back and then somebody said to me, well, you just need to stop talking about it because it makes me uncomfortable. Um, and I'm like, 
Katie is a liar, wants to know if I'm worried about the safety of my family after I got doxxed. No, I'm worried about my family because of not. Okay. Um, Oops. But I have. I don't, I don't get that answer there. She says, no, I'm, I'm, I'm actually worried about my family because I'm not. Is she saying because I'm not like she's not worried about her family? I don't know. They just I don't know what she was trying to say. It's like she got she got distracted and just kind of trailed off. And then she just like jumped ship with the gun. Then. I don't know. Why, why are you being so affectionate now? Normally, I can't get you to come near me. Okay. No problem putting out his name publicly because he is okay. a public individual and he Here should be, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm sure my haters will just say that I'm doing something super negative because, you know, I can't have anything in my life that actually is bad. Um, but this is like, honestly, sharing this story um, is to help other people. And I want to say that no, like, no, so many of your comments were like, thank you. You have no I idea how much I needed to hear this. Thank you. You no, gave me hope. Um, thank you. You told me what I needed to hear. I wish I would have done that. Thank you for being brave. It's not even about being brave. Honestly, I feel like if we don't talk about it, we just stuff it down. And I feel like there's no timeline for healing. So, um, like, if you tell someone to stop talking about it or to just get over it, you don't get to tell someone what they need to get over. You can get through life and you can have a lot of days where you don't think about it, but you also have days when you do think about it. And there's aspects of your life that will never be the same ever. And you can go through weeks where you think it's not affecting you, but in your soul, your body and your mind doesn't forget. You don't forget what you went through. You don't forget how it affected you. It does. It changes how you relate no. in your romantic relationships. It. I just. What she's saying, I believe, is true. Um. Just pay attention, though. For. So we're like fifteen minutes into it. Just pay attention to how, her demeanor and her her approach and everything to. This discussion changes. And, and what it is, she she starts to really show that she cares about, or she cares about um, happening. Changes how you relate to your spouse or your partners. It changes how you relate to your friends. It makes, um, it hardens your heart, makes you not trust people. And it's hard to speak out because every time you speak out, you know that there's going to be a million people that accuse you of, someone said to me, well, you let them into your house. What did you expect? Like, no. That's not how this works. Anyways, um, I think when I the first time I listened to this, that's that's one of the first things that jumped out at me because though that's true, what she said is absolutely a true statement. I feel like anyone who's been in that position in this situation, though, there's always that that doubt, like in the back of your mind, or like somehow somewhere inside you, where you feel like it's your fault you feel like you feel like it's your fault it's not it's so totally not but i mean you know like we're we're our, we are our own worst critic really but it's more than that i think when it comes to something like this we just we always just feel like it's our fault you know so i'm to hear her say that with such confidence you know but then also describe and explain all these other um Um, do, all these other ways that she's dealing with this trauma still it just it that kind of just caught my attention I don't know Franny okay I gotta put you down right this is too hard for you sitting like this Franny, I have uh, all the proof I need and I'm not worried. And the fact that I, I'm not worried. The fact that someone's telling me to be worried is stupid. Sue me, sue me. Guess what? If Nick sues me, then I get to open up discovery on his ass. And then he gets to pretend, and then he gets to tell. First of all, I want to just point this out here real quick. So this stream that she did, like I said, was on September 6, 2020. So this was before she was served with the Tidy Westbrook lawsuit. So that seems to have been like her saying of that season was 
like no one is going to sue me because the discovery for them will, will be a bitch or something. Tell me everything that happened. He would be an idiot to sue me. Now keep in mind though, after she had done all these videos and posts at this time in September, um, and it's of my belief anyways, that it was the person she accused who, who himself obtained a copy of this police report. And also by, I mean, think it wasn't for Katie Joyce, like admittance of this. I don't think any of us would know about it, but the person she accused took, tried to take out a TRO against her to stop her from basically harassing him by making these claims. Now, I have been of the belief since the very beginning that though I don't believe her claims that she she's made against the police officer, these claims, claims, mind you, were not made in 2007. They were made 13 years later in 2020. <laughs> though I don't, I don't and didn't believe that, I've still been of the belief that she, she's not lying about anything in her report. That's where I've been at for like the longest time until, oh, I don't know, a year ago, maybe about that. Um, yeah, I, I don't really buy her. Um, I don't buy her story. I don't, I, I hate to say that. I really do. I really do hate, fucking hate to say that, but there's too many, there's, there's too many things that don't make sense, but we'll go on for now. The last thing I care about is a lawsuit at this point. 13 years, I've lived in a complete and utter cage and I'm not going to be scared into maybe they'll sue me. No, I'm not going to shut up. I'm not going to be quiet. I'm not going to pretend like his family's influence didn't play a part in what happened. You've got a kid that's family owns numerous Okay, so here's what I've always wondered: How did his family's money and influence like have a take or play a part in what happened? Um, I mean, if she was making the claim that he avoided like I don't know accountability or whatever responsibility because he was so rich, all right, then I'd see that. But she doesn't really make that claim. So, I mean, I wonder how it is that his family's money or whatever influenced what had happened here huge businesses in the Twin Cities. It's a factor. When someone says that last name, people know who they are. And you know what they do. How could anyone that's involved in helping people at the very end of their life have anyone bad in their family? That's the excuse he dies on. That this is is that not a weird thing? So his family, one of one of the businesses that his family owns is um funeral homes. So she's saying that he made this claim like our family, we we take care of people at the very end of their lives. We would never be involved in such a crime like you're describing. Or like that's how she's making it sound. Like I'm pretty sure two things can be true at once. I mean, there I'm sure that there are some like funeral home directors or morticians, whatever they're called. There's some throughout the country who are capable of also maybe essaying someone. Not saying that they all do this. I'm not saying it's at all tied or there's some sort of causation or whatever between the profession and this crime. No, of course not. Just statistically speaking, I'm sure that there's bound to be a couple, you know? So I'm just wondering why it is so she she been, she brings it up. Like, I, I can't, I, I seriously don't think anyone even made that claim to her, but whatever. Really? But we yeah. help comfort families. How could we ever be bad? I mean, it's like the perfect veil. Franny, I'm going to ask you to stop talking about it and you can keep these opinions to yourself. You are my member and you support me, but I don't care about a lawsuit. And if you're worried about a lawsuit and that's all you want to talk about, I'm going to ask you to leave the chat. Um, you can talk to me about this privately, but at this point it's utterly distracting and <laughs> it doesn't matter what he's convicted. Like there is a verified police report. There are documented kits that have been taken. There are dozens of people that have told me that they believe that he's done this.
my friends was a funeral director. She said everyone in that industry is messed up. Yeah. I don't really know. Like, um, it's not a and thing, just right? because I'm, um, saying their names, they're a public business. All right. So right there. you're a public. Okay. So yeah, she's saying the name of the person she's accusing and the, um, the family name and stuff. So the individuals in their family though, are not a public business. Okay. The person she's accusing is not a public person or business. Okay. So just because they own a restaurant that is open to the public does not mean that the whole family is a public business. I don't know. It, I find this to be incredibly hypocritical of her because of how in a recent video and stream she did uh, discussing the whole um, Charlotte situation, she um, she made it a point to really dish out that, that, that whole talking point over and over and over again about how um, we were attacking a private person, someone who's not a content creator. We were we weren't attacking anyone, but you know what I'm you get what I'm saying. Um that we were, yeah, that we were like, I don't know, being dicks to a minor or whatever. And I feel like that's kind of fucked up. I just do. Like business. And you have someone in your family that's doing these things. That's it. I didn't say the business did those things. See, I said their nephew did these things and their grandson did these things. And that's the truth. And. Oh, no, wait, there was the wrong part. Shoot. I can't get him held accountable yeah. in a court of law. So we're not going to talk about the logistics of it. The statute of limitations is expired. The state of Minnesota has really stupid statute of limitations. I already consulted an attorney at one point. The civil statute of limitations is over. I don't know. The civil st statute may be over. I don't know. I never looked into that. But the criminal statute was is not over. The way Minnesota works is that you have so many years, but the loophole beyond those years is that if the kit was never processed, then once the kit is processed, you, you it's like it is, it's it's an extension onto the statute. However, there are stipulations to it, and I don't so I don't think she would qualify her case would or whatever. And um, unless they will actually process the kit, if they find DNA, they have tons of evidence. They've just never processed any of it because the police officer didn't want to. Not true. Not true. Um, so the way um, back when in 2007, the way it worked in Minnesota was it wasn't the DA that really made the ultimate decision on whether or not a case would be prosecuted or recommended for prosecution. It, the, the detective um, working the case had a, the, a very large input on that decision. And it wasn't that he decided against it. It's just there wasn't enough. There wasn't enough evidence to to run with it, basically. So um, it wasn't that he didn't want to do it. It's that it, it was. It would have been. It would have been futile, you know. Um. So yeah. Oh, and as far as like her kit, it, it, it never was processed. But the reason why it wasn't processed is because um, both parties admitted that there was, in fact, intercourse, and that it was just the two parties. So if they processed it. There would be DNA found, and they're both in agreement of that. So it's like one of those things. They, they had such a large backlog and everything at the time that they reserved their processing for the cases that really genuinely needed the processing, where in her case, it, there wasn't any, no one was contesting it. So there wasn't a need for it at that time. So, um, and I'm not going to protect him by not saying his name because one of the biggest things that I've learned in this process is the reason why these men continue to do this stuff is because everyone's afraid to say their names because they're afraid of the backlash. They're afraid of the lawsuit. They're afraid of the, um, people coming after them. But guess what? When you say their name, they lose that power.
Yeah. Okay. So when she said his name, like I said, he he became kind of proactive in this whole ordeal. He obtained the police report. I it's well, it's not confirmed, but I really so I was told that there were three people who obtained the police report um throughout this time period. I was one. Um and an attorney was another. And that there was a third party who walked, literally walked into the police station there in Minnesota, requested it and obtained a copy of the police report. And that that person was a party in the case. That's what I was told. So I, you know, I'm of the belief that it was him. So that is, like I said, he went and he obtained the police report. And then he filed for a TRO against her to try to stop her from dragging his fucking name through the mud like this. Um. So when she says his name, I want to implore everyone here to, how do I want to put this? To consider the facts of the matter, just the facts, okay? And the facts are that the evidence is not there that supports her story. In fact, it kind of supports his story more than anything. We'll get to that shortly. Um, and that's, well, you're going to hear her say a few things that um, she she kind of, you know, that they, they're saying doth the lady protest too much. Well, that's kind of what she does when she's accused. She claims to be accused of wanting to be this dude's girlfriend. She protests too much. And then there's reference of I, I was looking to see if he left me his phone number the next morning. And then, um, well, yes, there's a few other things. Because then they have to prove to everyone else that they didn't do it. And it's never, how do you prove a negative like that? Seriously, how? Ever in their favor. Because less than 2% of people. Let's hear that again. Ever, then they have their name, the um, people coming after them. But guess what? When you say their name, they lose that power. Because then they have to prove to everyone else that they didn't do it. And it's never in their favor. Because less than 2% of people that go through this falsely accuse anyone because there's nothing to gain from this. There's nothing to gain from faking something like this. And it's, it really, that's the part of this that makes me really irritated because it's like, because 2% of the 90 of a hundred percent of the people that go through this, because 2% of it, 2% of the people fake it, the 98 other percent aren't believed. But in, if this were a burglary, you wouldn't, you would never question. Are you sure you weren't a part of it? Was your, are you sure your mascara wasn't asking for it? What was your mascara wearing when they came in? It's because your mascara says climax on it. That's why they took your mascara. It's not because they took your mascara. It's because of what it says. It's because it's red. Your mascara I want to address this here for a second. Cause I, I never really gave that much thought. Now, if your house is robbed and your money, your jewels, or whatever are stolen and you didn't have them locked up, you had them just sitting there on your dresser or something like that. Now you're not blamed. You're not, you're not held responsible for your shit having been broken into and stolen. No, but it is addressed that perhaps in the future, you might want to keep your valuables, the things that are important to you a little more secure in case this should happen again. Is there really anything wrong with saying that? And, and don't get me wrong. You, you, the, you're not to blame because bottom line is it's your fucking house. No one should be coming in your house unless you invite them in. No one. And anyone who comes into your house and steals shit, they're at fault a hundred percent. However, if these things mean that much to you, perhaps you just might want to consider a little more security for those things. You know, especially if you're going to leave your house unlocked. You know what I mean? So I I don't see, think that there's anything wrong with that. Gara was taken because it's red. You would never do that. It's it's unconscionable. See, and that's the thing. And there, no one in this whole house robbery situation, no one is saying to the, the homeowner, the only reason why your shit was stolen is because you, it's because you left it out. Why'd you leave it out? And perhaps if you didn't leave it out, it wouldn't have been stolen. No one says that. Everyone is in agreement 
that it doesn't matter if you leave it around or not. No one should be in your house stealing the shit. And anyone who comes in your house and steals the shit, they're a hundred percent to blame. But the rest of the conversation, it goes above and beyond that because it's no longer focused on the crime, but it's focused on the victim trying to find or come up with ways to help the victim obtain and feel more secure with their belongings. That's it. So I don't know. I just, it's the way she words that. There are so many people that I've learned that now through I've seen, um, Yeah, I don't, I don't have the live chat for this. So. <laughs> Scream his name. John Nicholas Kozlak. Again, this man has never been arrested, has never been charged, has never been convicted for this crime. And um, according, that's right, too. So when he tried to get the TRO against Katie, and this is Kate, per Katie's admittance, okay? I didn't get this information anywhere but Katie. Um, Katie had said that he he told the court that they had been dating, that they were like in a relationship. Of, I don't know how serious or how how big of one or how long or whatever, but there was some form of a relationship leading up to that point, and that it was when the relationship severed that this kind of came about or whatever. So, um, and I find it weird because. Apparently he did this back in like 2021, I think she said. But she never said a word to anyone about it. I mean, I it seems like weird that she put all of this other shit out there publicly on blast. But that she didn't tell fucking anyone. I wonder why that was. Date of birth. I'm just kidding. He has the same birthday as me. He's just a year older. Um, that was always the thing about him that I remember growing up is that we had the same birthday. He was just one year older and I never knew anyone that had the same birthday as me. And so I always thought it was funny growing up that we had the same birthday. Um, because how often do you know someone that has the same birthday as you? I still, to this day, he's like the only person I know personally that has my birthday. And so I remember. Some people I think maybe hear that and they think it's weird. Like, well, why do you expect to know someone who has your birthday? But I can relate. Like, I grew up like from kindergarten. There was another girl in school who had my birthday. So it's, I think that it. I don't think that that's very that uncommon to have to know someone who has the same birthday as you. I don't know. Remember when I ran into him that night? I was like, "Hey, we have the same birthday." You know, like that was the one part of it. I just that always bothered me. Like, why does he have to have my birthday? <laughs> Why does he get my birthday? He doesn't get my birthday. I don't like my birthday anymore either because of that. Like, I don't do anything for my birthday. I don't like holidays anymore because of it. Like, I feel like the fact that we have the same birthday has like stolen my excitement for having a birthday. <laughs> um, he does. It, I don't know. Maybe it's a nervous laughter or something she's doing or whatever, but she just, I don't know, it's, it's, seems oddly happy. Apparently he has a daughter, I guess. I don't know. Um, okay. Now, if I were, if I were in her shoes and I was discussing uh, this person who did something like that to me, one of my very first concerns would be that he had a daughter. If I knew he had a daughter, I, you know, like that would be a concern for me. And she's just like, oh, I know, I guess he has a daughter, whatever. And she's just like, whatever. Like, they, no, that would be something that I would want to keep considering. And I've publicly named him in my community. So this isn't new. Like, mm -hmm. I publicly named him on Facebook three years ago. And I would say half of my graduating class contacted me. We did not go to a big school. So everyone at school knows what he did. And no one says I'm lying. That's bullshit. So now I don't know really if everyone or anyone has said that she's lying so much, but I do know that according to her Facebook, two people, only only two people from her town there 
bought her story, but two is too many in my opinion. So in fact, that's ultimately why I landed on submitting the FOIA request for the um, police report because she was she was spreading this rumor, and not so much about him or whatever, about this this John dude or whatever, but about the investigating officer. She was talking about how the investigating officer allegedly told her she was lying, berated her for, for hours, had her crying, saying, oh, you're just a jealous ex-girlfriend. He would never do this. He has His family has prestige. Um, they would never be involved in something like that. Like She's very hung up on this whole, like, oh, he's from a good family. He'd never be involved in something as, as like, country is that like that's how she makes it sound and it's like what like I, I don't get it like she's really hung up on this whole like class difference between her and her alleged attacker or whatever um so yeah but like um it, it, on her Facebook page though as she's talking about this it's specifically about the the police department there was someone she went to school with and her mother that were believing her and they were commenting back and forth on the, in the thread with her. And that's what ultimately landed me on obtaining this, just to try to prove whether or not she she was right about the cop. Because I figured if what she's saying about the cop is true, well, then the department should fucking know about it. And if what she's saying about the cop is not true, well, then perhaps the community should know about it. Because otherwise, they're going to believe her. They're going to believe her that... And they're going to think that, oh, my God, I could end up like Katie Joy. If I report this, I could end up in this interrogation room, as she calls it, being berated and brought to tears in just a couple hours and being told how I'm a liar. Well, that's going to discourage a lot of people who are already probably naturally discouraged from reporting of reporting. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what kind of bothered me. So I don't know if actually anyone had said to her you're not lying i do know that only two people though but still two people from her community made it made it known to the public that they believed her so um they all believe me because they know what kind of person he is so i you know i don't have to convince the internet because i have people in my real life who've known me for years that know my character, that know everything about me, that um, knew who he was because they went to Catholic school with him. And, you know, one of my friends, Amy, yeah. she, she will just like go off. You, you might sometimes see her in comments. Yep. Um, that was one that, like I said, it was someone from her community and her mom. Amy was the other person. So um, she knows who he is. She went to Catholic school with him. She knows what his family is about. She knows exactly how he uses his family. It's well known how he uses his family. And that's the problem is there's always someone in a family like that that uses their family to get out of things. How it's though? The affluenza. Yeah, but how though? Okay, so affluenza it means that they they use money or like power, money, or influence to get out of things. But so how exactly did he use his family? Was it money, power, or influence? I, she never really states. So and this is another her her making this claim though is another example of her dragging this police department basically saying that they're corrupt and they could be either either bought off or influenced off or strong armed off whatever i, I also want to say too because at, at the time i i looked into this um and for some time afterward too to my knowledge, there has never been another person to come forward in any way, shape, or form to make any of these accusations against the person she accuses. Like, not before her, not after her, not whatever. Not at all. Also, the police uh, detective that she's accusing of these things has a stellar record. Like, no one, because like, let's, let's be honest here. If he did, in fact, just disregard her claims and just, you know, basically tell her to fuck off, you know, well, she couldn't be the only one. You know, there has to be others, right? Well, funny how no one else came forward. Also, after I did obtain the police report and Little Red and I did that stream there, um, she was pissed. Katie was quite pissed about it. So she then, in 2020, the end of 2020, she 
thought that that was a good time to make a formal complaint against this detective for things that she alleges he did 13 years prior in 2007. But whatever, she finally made the formal complaint. So the police department and looked into you know his his behavior, whatever his investigation and shit from 2007. And when they did this, they looked at all the evidence and you know all the steps and everything taken. One of which the interview that she talks about, where he berated her for for hours and brought her to tears, that was actually recorded. Now, it was never transcribed, but the police department doesn't need a transcription to look into it. They can be they can be privy to like all the sensitive information and shit in it. So. They, in fact, looked at that recording and they quickly found that her claims were not at all founded. I just want to throw that out there. Is Franny still talking? I didn't see her saying anything. Um, yeah, I don't know. And I don't. Um, so Haiti Jory was asked in the chat, where's Little Red? I've been when you're, I don't know. I haven't seen or heard from her in a while. Um, I don't know. I hope she's okay. I mean, I'm sure she is, you know, like, but yeah, I haven't seen her in a while. I don't know. Oh, wrong one. Okay. Franny is going to take a little time out. Like, I, I'm sure she's very concerned, but we're going to move on from this discussion. Um, I don't know if there's other people that have been a part of his, but I will say that um, he has a limousine business. And I was actually thinking about this. I had this part of this part of the story. I'd never. Okay. This is important here. You, you just heard her say that he has a limousine, limousine business, okay? It's actually considered because going through that entire night and that video was actually sort of like reprocessing my memory. And now there's parts of that story that don't make sense to me because I remember that night when I ran into him, it, he seemed really out of place. Like he hadn't been at the place I was at. He was literally just like walking around and he was by himself. He was by himself in his in his the city he lived in in like his hometown basically, out around the bars he was out by himself. A fucking weirdo. He was like looking for someone. You know what I mean? It was really bizarre. He wasn't working. He was probably looking for someone to hang out with since he was by himself. He wasn't with friends. He was literally by himself, and he was just walking in down in uptown doing what i don't know walking. but why and he hadn't been out at all he wasn't going out he he wasn't i don't know where he even came from it was like he told me why well, was just i just got off work you just got off work why are you walking around uptown for what purpose he wasn't going into any of the establishments he hadn't had a beverage he had just gotten off work where he drove limousines for for work and he wasn't drinking. What a fucking weirdo, right? Oh my God. Like, what did you expect? If he just got off of work and he drove limousines for, for a living, he better fucking show up at the bar sober. God damn it. <laughs> he was totally sober. And like, was I just the person that he happened to like run into that night you know what i mean and then that makes me wonder if he still does that does he does he if he still does does he still go out in his hometown to hang out with people he knows after work where he didn't drink at all at work driving limousines and now he wants to go out and have a drink does he still do that fucking better not you know I, what the still get off work and walk around in uptown looking for people because he spotted me. I did not. I did not see him. I was. She just said a few minutes ago, she said, oh, yeah. So I saw him. I'm like, oh, we got the same birthday. We're birthday twins, right? Well, I didn't see him, but he spotted me. Not uh, even paying attention. 
like he literally saw me and was like, Hey, Katie, it was bizarre. Literally just a few minutes prior, she told a different story. He said that he was working, but he didn't have his limo. It was weird. He didn't have his limo at all because he said he had been driving people around, but he didn't have a limo. It was really weird. He had his like, whatever, his Denali or Yukon, whatever it was he was driving. He did not have his limo. <laughs> it was the weirdest thing. And I, it was like, if he was a truck driver, should he have had his like big, huge rig with him too? I mean, that's how that sounds. It's the most bizarre thing. Yeah, that's bizarre. I know. I still can't get the red record button off. So he wasn't really doing any drinking. That was the thing. Because we went, he met oh, outside of that place. <laughs> we went over to my friend Sasha's house. We got to my friend Sasha's house. My friends ordered pizza um, from Pizza Luce. And then um, people started making drinks. I remember somebody made me a drink, but I wasn't really wanting anything because I had been drinking beer that night and they were making me like a vodka cranberry. And I just like, wasn't into that at all. And I got really tired. That's, that's completely different than what she said in her report. I, I'm not going to blow it up now, but it's completely different. I know, I know it is. They ordered like four pizzas. I mean, the fact that I can remember that, you know, like I can remember sitting in my, in Sasha's kitchen and, um, Stefan, my friend, Stephanie was there. My friend, Paul was there. Sasha was there. Nikki was there. And I was sitting in there with Nick and then Stephanie, and then all of this pizza comes in. And I remember eating a couple pieces of pizza. And then after I ate the pizza, I was like super tired and I wanted to see in the police report. She doesn't say, I, maybe she says something about pizza, but she emphasizes that they were eating hot dogs. So I don't know. To go home. And I would have had to either call a cab or like there, this was before Uber. There wasn't Ubers then. <laughs> there wasn't an Uber in 2007. So I would have had to call a cab. And he was like, well, I can drive you home. So, and he hadn't been drinking. So I wasn't worried about it. Huh. So he was driving. So let me get this straight. Katie, who wasn't driving was shit face this dude who was driving didn't drink because he had to try yeah he he's up to no good there hey friends <laughs> i'm sorry kim that that happened to oh, you no. <laughs> i felt like the the cop gaslit me that's what it felt like I felt like he was gaslighting and it was funny because I was trying to find him on the website and I don't okay. remember his last name. Okay. name is We're going to skip over that just to be safe here. Investigations. His name is Michael Garland. That, that's not his name though. But I also don't want to like put some other dude's name out there. Who's not the officer. Just yeah. His partner is my neighbor. This part <laughs> across the street. I'm not even lying. My neighbor right across the street, John, is partners with Mike. And I will not even talk to John because of Mike, because Mike gives me so many bad feelings. <laughs> and John has nothing to do with it. See, that's literally. That's, that's it. Okay. So she just said that there, I will not talk to him. Now, in older blog post in the comment section she said the same thing but she says it in a much more like serious way she's like i just seeing him makes my makes me sick and you know he doesn't know why it's not his fault i just can't talk to him it makes me you know makes me sick to my stomach but then um it was probably right around the time she did this one too maybe a little bit after like within eight, six months after this anyway she does another live stream where she starts talking about the same neighbor again and um she explains how this dude, her, her her neighbor there, like built the house that they that they're living in, and he was telling her or showing her one or the other how there's all these little hidden compartments throughout the house where he has guns stashed. So she can't talk to the dude, but she knows all about his secret gun stash and shit all throughout his house. Uh huh. 
Yeah. So John moves in and he was like, yeah, I work at St. Paul or St. Louis Parks Police Department. And he's a lieutenant of patrol um, because of seriously and has to be. And he's a lieutenant of patrol, I think. And on super tidy, he's the kind of guy that will mow the lawn and sweep the driveway. I mean, that's how he is. He has a boat. He's a dad. He's a good guy. But I literally will not talk to him because he's Mike's partner. I should ask him, like, what's Mike's last name? But I don't know. Yes, you can stay, Smokey P. Thank Bree says, I love you, Katie, and all the awesome subscribers here. We're all a team for each other to lean on. Yes. It's, you know, it's hard because you feel like you'll, you. He's an adult. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, the, you know, Linda, that's what I've heard too. I mean, I don't know, because I never experienced it. And I honestly, I'm not a, I'm not knowledge, really knowledgeable in, in any way, shape or form regarding this type of information. But from what I understand that when you, if you are drugged or whatever, it's not like, you don't remember everything with like this precise, clear vision up until the moment the shit takes effect and then your memory's gone. Like you, you're, you lose memory, like be in moments in, in, in everything for some time before it even, it takes effect. Like the whole night is like shot or whatever, but I mean, whatever I know if in fact she had been given something, who knows what it was you know, and who knows how much or who knows what her tolerance, you know, it, there's so way too many variables really to say anything for sure. But there's one thing though, one variable that there was looked into and can be said for sure. That's um, when the evidence was taken from her house and everything, including all the beer cans and shit, they were tested for narcotics and they all came up negative for narcotics. you heal and then you don't, and then something will set you back. And I think like part of me sharing too, was I wanted to remind people that even if it happened a ton, like 20 years ago or 15 years ago, like I still, it's okay to fall back. It's okay. If you have a few bad days, it's okay. If you slip, it's okay. If you feel stuck, it's okay. If you feel disassociated, it's okay. If you feel triggered and hurt and anxious, it's okay. That doesn't mean you're going to stay in those feelings. Um, there's nothing in your system either. I don't, I don't know if that's true or not. Um, I never obtained any um, hospital records, any exam records or anything like that. I, I honestly, I didn't want that shit anyways. I just, I knew I had in order for me to, to be given anything, I had to just ask for a blanket request for like everything. Um, but I was not given any of that. So I don't know. I have no idea every day, usually for most of us, you learn how to bury it and not think about it. And you learn how to go through your life. And that doesn't mean you forget. And sometimes it just boils up and comes back when you're least expecting it. And that's what happened to me. And fellow Minnesota moms can understand this so much more too. It's okay to have a real, says you are apparent, permanently the person who this happened to. You know what, Katie, what would help if people would stop with assumptions? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what assumptions people are making. I couldn't watch your videos before today. My videos? I couldn't watch your other videos before today. What other videos? Oh, the okay. Um, I have a I look into my cameras over here, and then my computer screen is over here, and then my chat is down here. So if I'm not looking into the camera, it's usually because I'm reading my chat, which is not where my camera eyes are. I apologize. Ow. Oh my god, it hurt. I don't know what assumptions I'm making, though. I'm still worried about that. I'm trying to read the comments. It's hard because <laughs> I want to try to like engage 
and this isn't like your normal stream. Like some of my streams, I actually am just like bloop, 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 but um, it's okay when you get triggered. Now you have deeper meaning. Oh, you didn't watch my triggering one. Yeah, I, I don't expect everyone to watch it. I mean, I feel like people are going, the people who want to see it and need to see it will watch it. And um, that's who I made it for because I put a bunch of stuff at the end of that video for people that need help. I gave resources, I shared some quotes, I gave some phone numbers or some links for people um, because that's really why I was doing it. I wanted people to know like there are ways to get better if they need help. That's honestly why I did it. I'm trying to like read and do a lot of different things at the same time. Isn't it funny how there's like things that you can remember too? Oh, like yeah. I can still remember like the smell of the room on the day that I woke up. It, it was her bedroom. She can remember the smell of her bedroom. I I, I don't, I'm the same. I'm not, I'm not trying to be a bitch here. I'm really not. I'm not trying to nitpick things, but it was her bedroom. This wasn't this wasn't some like room at some place she she rarely stayed at or never stayed at or never been at before or whatever. This this was a room she was in every night at that time in her life. Every night. Okay. So she can remember what that room that she was in every night smelled like. That's what she's saying. I I don't know why. They just jumped out of me like. Well, okay, but yeah, you were there every night, so I would think that you could remember that. You know what I mean? Like, I can, I can get a sense, or I can kind of remember an idea of like what my bedroom spent like when I was growing up. You know what I mean? Um, just because I was there every night. Yeah. It was like really damp in there, and it felt really like cold. I can also remember like the darkness of the when I went to the hospital of that room, and I can still remember the fluorescent lights that were in the room that the investigator put me in. And so the hospital what, exam room had dark lights. Is that what she said? And the hum, I can still hear the hum of the, of those lights, like in my ears sometimes. And like, I can still remember like waking up and saying, no, I used to wake up a lot and have that in my head. But <laughs> I'm trying to think of what it ruined. He ruined my birthday because we had the same birthday. He ruined my birthday. He ruined karaoke. He ruined, <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah, she said karaoke. She did. I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to move on. I, I always wonder, like, what it would have been like to actually have been believed and like what it would have felt like to have them actually believe me and not have been told I was not. The one part that always bothered me about the story was that I was somehow positioned as a scorned lover. And that always bothered me because I didn't want to be his, I didn't want to be his lover at all. He wasn't my type. He was too short. And I'm sorry if you're a shorter person. <laughs> I like guys that are six feet or over. And he's about five, eight, five, nine, very lean and small in stature. And I like a guy that's like taller with broader shoulders. That's always what I've dated. He was always too slight for me. And I don't, that's just not what I'm attracted to. Like some people like a slighter, leaner guy. That's not what I'm into. It's never been what I've been into. The boyfriend that I had before him before that night <laughs> was six foot one my ex-boyfriend before but he's not super skinny but like is too slight for me and eight five nine. he was too lover at all he wasn't my type he was too short and sure tall me and i don't that's just not what i'm attracted to like some people like a slighter leaner guy that's not what i'm into it's never been what i've been into the boyfriend that I had 
before him, before that night <laughs> was six foot one. My ex-boyfriend before that was six foot two. My husband is six feet tall. My husband has broad shoulders and he's a bigger guy. Like he's, he's lean, but he's not super skinny. That's never really been my thing. I'm not tall at all either. I'm not tall. I'm short. I'm five foot three and a half, but I've always liked tall guys because I, <laughs> my joke when I was a kid was I needed to be with a tall person because that way my child would have a chance. Now, the irony in all of this is I have a, I have a child. Okay, so <clears throat> I, I, when I rewound, she started talking about the, the physical attributes or whatever of those involved at the 40 minute, 30 second mark. So she's in, we're at 42 now. So she just went for a minute and a half, 90 seconds straight, which I know it doesn't maybe sound like much, but if you say it there and watch the clock for 90 seconds, you'd you get a good feel of just how long that is actually. So she just went off for 90 seconds about how she was not attracted to the person she's accusing because I, who, who was saying that she was like, why, why, why would that have been, why is that a thing? Why is it a thing to be discussing? Even if it's just to, to deny it or whatever, like, why do you feel like you need to, I, I don't, that's the weirdest thing. I don't know child that has a form of growth hormone dwarfism. <laughs> so he's in the fifth percentile of his height um, for his age. So I don't know how tall my son will ever be. He's very small for his size. Um, and it doesn't matter how tall my husband is. He just doesn't have the tools mm -hmm. to grow. Now he responds to growth hormone, but it's it's kind of ironic in a way. They claim that they can get him to be about my, my husband's height, but we'll see. And they say that statistically he should follow the growth pattern of his father in terms of his height. So, but he's so small. He's literally in the fifth percentile. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he wasn't my, oh, he wasn't my type. He also like, just a little. I don't know, his whole like aesthetic just wasn't me. He like had slicked back hair and he was just not well, back to it. It. <laughs> like, I like guys that are like in a t-shirt and jeans, uh, manly guys. I don't know. Like my husband is very like, he's a dude and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to like, I feel like I'm being like, if a guy isn't a dude, <laughs> that I'm somehow being like mean, but I've always just liked guys that are like dudes, you know? Um, he's like, my husband loves to woodwork and he's super handy and he's really like, you know, into all that kind of stuff. And, and Nick was so like mm -hmm. coddled that I don't think he knew how to do anything. And that's not attractive to me, like at all. <laughs> yeah. I like guys that are like rough and tough, but it's funny because my husband never played sports really. He's not like, but he loves football. Um, but he's also super sensitive, which is really funny, but he's also very man. <laughs> Oh my God. You guys are contacting them. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. Oh dear. I tagged yep. them on Twitter. Um, here's the thing. Like, yeah, I've lived in silence for far too long. I always feel bad about like, you know how like everyone has their own preference. Even my husband, when I met him, his hair was too light. So she's still going on about the type of man that she finds attractive and why she didn't find him attractive. She's still going on about this. Like this is something important that needs to be explained and broken down because that the lady protests too much. Maybe I don't know. Like, you know, I was so weird. I really liked guys that were tall and had dark hair. I had never gone for a guy that had light hair. And my husband is really fair. Um, he has like blondish hair. He has blue eyes and his skin is super pale. Um, he sunburns constantly. He's very fair. And all the guys that I'd always dated before were like taller, darker, more like Mediterranean. Like it's, like my boyfriend before him was, an Ita was Italian. So yeah, I remember meeting my husband and I was like, he's kind of pale for my, for my liking. <laughs> You know, you have whatever it is that makes you happy.
like don't yeah don't contact his family i, I would i would only con like i just want people to know it's him like that's it um Yeah, don't mm -hmm. contacting someone. Annie contacted someone on Facebook. Yeah, this I think. Oh, near. Don't contact her. I only share the business information because he is connected to them. If you're, you know, I, I take the police. That's who I care about, um, not the businesses. But they, you know, at the end of the day, like, no they don't have anything to do with it. Like they're related to him mm -hmm. and he uses their name. That's the point. Like he's using their names. They're not, he's using their names. And I think he worked at one of the places. You've only, <laughs> types are a thing. It is, it's true. I don't think anything is getting out of control. Oh, shit. Either way, Oops. don't contact their, the businesses. I want to hold accountable him, and I want people to know that he's using his family's name to get out of stuff. And perhaps that will help his family disconnect from him because they should. See, they're right there. Okay. <laughs> she has no idea what kind of relationship this dude has with his family. She has no idea if they're close. She has no idea like what his involvement is in any of their businesses. All she knows is that he's in the area. He lives in the area. And he has a limousine company. That's all she knows. And she just said, what was it she said right there exactly here? I want to hold accountable him. And I want people to know that he's using his family's name to get out of stuff. And perhaps that will help his family disconnect from him. because they She wants the family to disconnect from him. She wants, yeah. They should. They should not support him and they should disconnect and not associate and not help him financially. I don't know if they help him financially anymore, um, but I know that he was able to build his limousine business based on his family's name. The Chiefs just popped in, yeah. He's always used his family. He was 28 years old when he was doing this. In fact, oh God, a couple years ago, I said his name publicly. And, um, and I named the businesses. I've always named the businesses. So I wouldn't be surprised if they already know. Um, they probably look at him as a stain on their family name, to be honest. But somebody from his, so somebody that was friends with his grandparents reached out to me. And they said, so his grandpa, his grandfather died a couple years ago. And he said his grandfather would be rolling in his grave. And I, he's like, that is not how he raised his grandchildren to be. And that's not how he raised his children. And she said, but I would not be surprised if he's done this before and he is still doing this because he has always been bailed out by everyone in his family and he has never been held accountable for anything. He is the kid that has always been a problem. And that's coming from someone who knows them, you know? And then you have people from my high school telling me the exact same thing because he was that kid that was never held accountable. Ever. Hmm. Yeah, so I actually got tested for everything. Um, I had to take antibiotics for two weeks um, in the event that I was given any sort of STI. I was given the plan B in the event that he didn't use protection. I was, so I took a really strong antibiotic in the event that I was given like the G thing, the C thing, any of those. Um, so I took two weeks of antibiotics. I got plan B from them. I got a bunch of meds. They gave me a ton of meds and they tested my blood but they never returned any of that information. Take back my birthday. I should. Well, I mean, you can, like, so all right, um, I did everything I was supposed to do. I gave them all the evidence from my house. They took my comforter, you guys. They took my comforter and my sheets, and I never got them back. They <clears throat> um, Right, I'm just going to come out and ask this question. Would you want it back? Like, if you were in her shoes, would you want those items back? Would you be kind of upset that after all these years, they still didn't return this shit to you? Like,
Yeah. The last thing I'd want is the bed. Yeah, exactly. It's uh they took my clothing, they took they took so much stuff from my house. I've never been told anything about it. Nothing. <laughs> my birthday's in November. Oh, you guys, I'm gonna be 42. I don't want to be 42. I don't even want to be 41. <sighs> so dumb. So dumb. I don't know. I honestly just I just tagged them on Twitter and I said it's been 4,885 wow. days since you said you were gonna call me and you haven't called me yet. <laughs> the blues department, that's what she did. She and she actually, I saw the tweet. She actually did do that. 4,885 days since you said you were gonna call me. So yes, I am motivated to expose people because of what happened to me. I am motivated to investigate because clearly investigators couldn't investigate my case. I am motivated to expose people that do this kind of stuff because of what happened to me. I'm motivated to support people that go through this because of what happened to me. Um, I'm motivated to use my voice to support other women because of what happened to me. I am motivated to call out people that do this kind of stuff because of what happened to me. A lot has happened to me besides this that motivates me. There was also the stuff with my grandma that motivates me. And then, you know, what my ex-boyfriend did to me. That also shaped me. I mean, my ex-boyfriend is a whole nother can of worms. That guy's a piece of something. That guy's horrible. <laughs> Terrible. Hmm. I know. The, like, And the funny thing is I'm a scorned lover, but I didn't want his phone number. <laughs> I didn't want your phone number. I didn't want to ever talk to you again. But yeah. When she, when she did give her initial report there to a police officer, um, he asked something like, um, after you woke up or whatever, you know, when you came downstairs or whatever, what did you do or something like that? And she went on to explain that she looked, she walked downstairs to see if, you know, her guest was still there or if he had left a phone number. He, she looked around for a phone number, but she didn't see one. It's it, no one asked her about a phone number. No, no one said a fucking word about numbers or phones. She came out and said that this, she was expecting to find like a phone number or something. Yeah, I think the detective is still there, but I tagged them on Twitter, so we'll see if they respond. <laughs> I said I have a really large platform, and everyone's gonna know what you guys did. Sorry. See, she says sorry there. But I'm not buying it. Like, I'm gonna rewind this again. Oh, just does she? Do you buy her? Sorry. Like, do you? Do you? Do you believe it? Yep. I think the detective is still there, but I tagged them on Twitter, so we'll see if they respond. <laughs> I said I have a really large platform, and everyone's gonna know what you guys did. Sorry. Sorry. That is. Mm -hmm. Harvey Weinstein didn't get justice until people spoke out. Bill Cosby didn't get justice until people spoke out. So I'm just going to follow their lead. <laughs> I'm done. She's going to follow Harvey and Bill Cosby's lead. So that, that's how that kind of sounds. I know that's not what she meant, but that's kind of how it sounds. I feel like there's this massive misconception about this Sophie story because of a video that's circulating saying I that I didn't believe her. I was talking in a live stream about how the court said it didn't happen and a forensic evaluation said it didn't happen and they said she was being coached. So we were talking about was she being coached and was the court being truthful and was she just being coached and acting out like that? It wasn't saying she was doing that. And then if the whole video would have been up at the end, you would have heard me say, but they don't show you that part, that I do believe that she was a victim but because of what the court said, I didn't know what happened. And that's the problem because whenever there's something online, you have one story and then you have another story and you, and I am always trying to evaluate against it. And then in another live stream, I said, I'm going to believe her until someone tells me differently. And I even said that I was skewed in my belief because of the way that we all process things automatically questioning. And I admitted I was wrong in a video that's still up on my channel. So I don't know why people keep clamoring to this. It's not even true. What? Wait. We'll keep automatically was skewed in my belief. I'm going to believe her until and you and I am always trying to evaluate against it. And then in another live stream, I said, I'm going to believe her until someone tells me differently. 
And I even said that I was skewed in my belief because of the way that we all process things automatically questioning. And I admitted I was wrong in a video that's still up on my channel. So I don't know why people keep clamoring to this. It's not even true. Okay, so she just said, and I admitted I was wrong. And then she answered with, I don't know why people keep going on about this. It's not even true. Like, were you wrong or is it not true? Yeah. The only thing I said was that custody cases are very wild and attorneys will tell you that things can happen. And whether it's one thing or another, the little girl is still the victim. And that's what I said at the end of that video. And that's the truth. And the problem with the toxicness around that story is that you can't even talk about what the court says because automatically people say that you're you're not believing the dad. But how do you go, well, this is what the court says. This is what they say, because there's always two sides. And you know, just like with me, there's two sides. He said this, which I told you, he said this, I said this. So, you know, you, they were in court. They also said it was edited. You know, does that mean I don't believe her? No, it's just me talking about what was being said. <clears throat> I try to always just evaluate and question everything that I'm getting. And like, and that's what I said, Piper. I said it was either a case of what happened to her, which would have been SA, or it would be a case of horrific parental alienation. Either way, it's A-B-U-S-E. Either way, she's the victim. And that's what I said. So either way, she's being coached to act this way, or either way, it happened to her. But either way, she is not at fault, and she doesn't deserve it. And the good news is that there's a court order now keeping her away from the alleged perp that did this and they are investigating and they will figure out what happened and i talked to like the reason why i was having questions was i talked to like three attorneys that day to ask them about what happens in family law and a lot of stuff can happen in custody cases but that doesn't mean that what's happening to her didn't happen it's just a mess to be honest Correct. Oh, he says she's a victim of something and needs to be right. safe regardless. Yeah. And that is what I said. But people want to automatically just take that one part of the video where we were questioning what she was talking about and saying what the court said and them saying she was acting out and them saying she was being ratty. And so then you're like, well, that doesn't mean I think she is. Hey, yeah. Okay. It's like, or completely like off topic here. So is anyone else having problems with the YouTube comment search um, extension? Um, it, it, I, I tried it on Firefox and on Google, and it's not working. Like it's not it's not picking up the the live chats or the transcription. Sometimes I, I'll, I'll get a video where it it will list the comments or whatever, but it's not working on the other two. So if anyone knows if there's a way to get it to work or if there's a very similar option, can you let me know? Thank you, because I love that feature. But I'm always going to support a kid regardless, <laughs> you know, you know, period. But this whole assertion that I don't support her is just, it's just made up. It's fake outrage. And it's, I'm not, beyond that, I have nothing else to say. I contacted, I posted his information, but don't contact him. Like, don't, don't contact the businesses. I'm putting out the public information because it's public information. That's all I'm doing. I'm not telling people to do not harass anyone. Me sharing my story is for me to take my power back. And he will have to know that people know it's him. And that to me is satisfying because he can't hide anymore. And I'm not going to let him hide because people know. Yes, do not contact the family or their businesses, 100%. See, if she didn't want that, though, why did she put all of that information out there? She was she was trying to drag them into yes. it. It's for my empowerment to share. It's not for you to hurt them. 
But she said, she says over and over again how she wanted to make it public. She wanted to put these these names and everything on the public. She wanted to publicly like it, have people bear witness to her claims, basically. What did she think was going to happen when people did that? Like people don't normally hear stories like this and think, yeah, oh my God, yeah, they're jerks. And then just like go about their day. Like oftentimes people will be like invested or feel like it's something they want to invest in. So I don't know. I feel like, you know. I don't, I don't go to their, can I tell you a story? My mom and dad's 40th wedding anniversary was 10 years ago, 11 years ago. No. Yeah, 11 years ago. And they go, they wanted to go to Jack's. It's owned by his family. And I said, I will only go if we know that he's not there. So we had to contact them to ask if he wasn't there. It's the only time I've ever been there and I will never go back. And I only went there because my family wanted to go there. They have excellent food, by the way. It's an excellent restaurant. I don't have them anymore, do I? Shit. You guys are going to be for everything. The haters will be me for everything. I'm not going to let you steal my thunder. I'm not going to let you make me feel bad. You are responsible for your actions. I'm responsible for my actions. I'm right there, right there. The haters, are, they're, they're, they're not going to believe me anyways. They're, I'm not going to let you steal my thunder. Like, What thunder are you getting from this? I, I don't, I'm not sure that this thunder I'd want, you know, like, I don't know. I'm not responsible for what other people do. I'm only responsible to say, I'm sharing this publicly. I'm okay with sharing that publicly. I'm not disparaging these people. I'm saying, this is what happened. This is his family. That's it. Don't contact them. That's it. And if you are someone that's worried about what's going to happen to these businesses or to him, you're not my, you're not supporting me. You're not here for me. You're only here for the drama. So yeah. Anyways, I got to go. Okay. So yeah. thank you guys so much um, for being there for me, for supporting me. I am not here um, to argue, but the people that are in here commenting, making these comments, they're the people that are always making these kinds of comments. I could rescue bear. I could rescue kittens from a burning building and you guys would blame me for burning the building down. <laughs> Bye guys. So yeah, there's that. So. No, wait, we're going to cancel it. All right. And stop screen. There we go. Okay. So, um, yeah. Now, like I said, there's, her she there's other videos or streams or whatever where she tells her story like she gets down to the you know the this i don't know the crappy parts that no one wants to hear really you know um this was not that so much also there's um let me grab a link for that or would that be playlists i think Okay, so we have, um, why is it not showing me that? Oh, okay. So there's this one video I did. It was, um, right, I don't know, sometime after this, this stream here of hers. Here we go. So this video here takes, um, it has clips from all the videos and streams that she did like within that week. Nowhere throughout this video here, this bunch of clips I put together, nowhere does she talk about the person she's accusing or any of the things that went on between her and that person that she's accusing. It's no discussion about that whatsoever at all. The only thing in this video is her making accusations or claims against the officer and or the de police, police department. Okay. So there were like three or four streams slash videos that I pulled these clips from. 
there's almost seven minutes, seven minutes of her where she just accuses the police department and or the the detective. Seven minutes. Like if if the other three videos are like 20 minutes long or whatever, and this one I was able to pull seven minutes from those three, that's kind of a lot for I don't know. That that's kind of a lot, I think. It's just and I'm not saying okay, like she seemed when she when she told her story, it, it didn't she seemed really intent intending on um putting as much blame or shit or whatever as she could on this detective. That's what it that's what it sounded like to me. And then that really kind of bothered me at first. Um because like I said, if if he was still there and he and this, what she said was true, well then the department needed to know. And if it wasn't the case, or if he was still there and it's he didn't do these things, well, then I think he kind of knows what she's saying about him, you know. Um, but I I feel like if she had gotten any more traction on the story, especially locally, she could have really fucking ruined and destroyed this man's reputation. Now, I know a lot of people say, oh, well, he's a cop. You know, he, what they investigated themselves, yada, yada. Yeah, okay. But there's only one person who's made any of these claims against him, and that's her. Only one. And he's been doing the, his job for quite a while. I feel like there would be at least a handful more if any of the things that she said were in fact true, in my opinion. So. That's where I stand with that. Oh, yes, right. I was sharing this link. So, okay, so the seven-minute video I was talking about where she's just talking about the police department and, and or detective, this is the link. I'm going to put it in the chat in case anyone wants to check it out or whatever. It's, you know. So, there we go. All right. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like maybe just... Revisiting this, I think maybe just kind of I they, nothing was nothing was put none of the scales were put back level or anything here with, regarding all the shit she's been doing to the Brown family, you know. And I wasn't really trying to do that, but it's just I don't know. I think that this was warranted to be revisited, though, nonetheless. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, DC. Also weird that the time she got serious was when others were talking about her questioning someone else's story, but to question hers is wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, guys. I'm going to get going. I'm tired. I'm really tired. I don't know. It shit's just started hitting me like right towards the end of the stream there. Um, I have to work tomorrow. But I'll probably be streaming tomorrow night. So I'll see you guys then. Thanks for being here. And have a great night. And be sure to check out the Eclipse if you can. If Especially if you're like in the good parts of the country there. Just make sure you wear eye covers or whatever eyeglasses and stuff for it. So you don't go blind. <laughs> Someone at work was telling me. I, I think it was a joke though. They were saying that you, you can safely look at the Eclipse through a bottle of Jack Daniels. I'm like... Well, hopefully not if it's empty. I mean, that can't be good. <laughs> he just looked at me and he shook their head. And like, well, <laughs> but don't do that. Don't use a bottle of Jack Daniels. Buy the, only the approved glasses wherever. I mean, you can get the paper ones real cheap like anywhere pretty much. So don't go blind. I'll see you guys later. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.